I want to speak concerning a man of faith in the Old Testament. His name is Abraham. You may have heard of him. Uh, this is uh, Romans chapter 4. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that judgeth, uh, uh, sorry, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So we see it's salvation is by faith alone and not by works of any kind whatsoever. So in other words, we cannot do good deeds to get to heaven. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, that is salvation is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Even as David also describeth the blessedness or the happiness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without law. In other words, without works. Saying, blessed are they whose, or happy are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I wonder, have you come into this blessedness, this happiness of having your sins totally washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that he shed for us on the cross in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Cometh this blessedness uh, then upon the circumcision only, in other words upon the Jews only, or upon the uncircumcision also, in other words, the Gentiles also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness, how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. So spiritually speaking, if you're a believer, spiritually speaking, you are a child of uh, Abraham because he is the father of faith, as we've just seen here in the scriptures. Uh, Yes, he is the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. In other words, though they're, they're not Jews. That righteousness might be imputed unto them also, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See how faith keeps on getting mentioned here because it's so vital to our salvation. You see, faith is actually the key that unlocks the door to salvation to all those who call upon the name of of the Lord for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved for if they which are of the law be heirs in other words if the Jews be heirs faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath for where no law is there is no transgression and if you watch my video from yesterday I was highlighting the fact that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, and the law was our schoolmaster. I didn't quote this yesterday, but this is a fact. 
the law as our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might see where we'd gone wrong, that we might see that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. You know, uh, just evaluating ourselves, um, we look at the law of God, the commandments of the Lord, and we see how far short we fall. We all fall far short of that perfect standard that God has. And that was just an outline of it, the commandments of the Lord. Obviously, you know, um, there's a lot more sins that could have been mentioned, but they're basically contained in those Ten Commandments, uh, apart from the one concerning the Sabbath, which really only pertains unto the Jews as a nation. That was a national Jewish thing, uh, keeping the Sabbath. Um, yes, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So the law was added because of transgression. The law was added so that we'd see where we'd sin, how we'd sin before the Lord, how we don't match up anywhere near to the perfect standard of God. The only one who matches up, of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who lived the perfect life upon earth that you and I could never, ever live. Then he died the perfect sacrificial death upon the cross of Calvary for you and for me. Yes, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, in other words, not to only the Jews, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Remember I said that he's the father of the faithful, or the father of faith, you might say, who is the father of us all, that is, the believers. Abraham is our father in that sense, in a spiritual sense. Not physical, because we're not all Jews. Obviously, we haven't been born Jews. Uh, well, some of us have, have obviously, not me, but you might have been. Um, so yeah, we, we have the Jews and the Gentiles and also the Church of God. They're the three sort of divisions in this world at this time. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead or makes the dead alive, and calleth those things which be not as though they were who, against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. God had promised them. Although the, uh, Sarah was barren and they were very old at this point, God had promised them a son. And that was a miraculous thing that took place later on in their life. But God had promised them a, a seed. God had promised them a son. He was, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, that is what God had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. And that's actually taken place. The Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He wants to save your soul right now. Who was delivered for our offenses, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and was raised again for our justification. I wonder, have you been justified? in the sight of the Lord, made just as though you'd never sinned, just to simplify that word a bit in relation to salvation. That can be yours right now. If you come by faith, if you come in repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, 
simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. Heaven or hell, what will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Son of God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.